Um, so first we're trimming, and then we're getting rid of the double spaces here. Um, so then your name should be simply your name. So now we go to the set variables. Um, if we know they're hosting, then we want to set the public variable states true. If they're not, um, then we don't really need to put it, it's, it's equal to false because it started at false. So we just need to say if, if it's showing host, then the variable it, uh, for host is true. And then the IP address is copied down for the joiner. See, only the joiner is copying down the IP address. Um, now I remember why, because in the next form, we're going to have to connect to the IP address, but we don't remember what it was. It was in the last form, so we're copying it into a variable. Um, so that's what this is doing. <clears throat> and then copying down their name. And then we're showing the other form, and we're unloading this form. So that's simply all this does right now. Your name, um, host or join, and you put host to start. It just goes into the next form. Um, go ahead and close that. <coughs> Excuse me. So that was the very first form right here. It's just not really that important. Um, we're going to go over to the other form. This is the critical part. This is the part you really want to understand because you get this down, you can start making those games online um, with Visual Basic 6. You can make your own chat room, copy this chat room, doesn't matter, but you can advance from this point and make something really cool, um, even make games that play together, talk to other people, whatever, lobby chat rooms. Okay, so we're going to go to view code. <clears throat> okay, this is going to get a little bit longer. Let's see here. Um, go down. 381 lines of code, so we got to go quickly through this. Some have a lot of parts. Um, this will be available to download, so but if you have questions, you can ask. So when the form first loads into that, then to that window that looks like a chat room, it's going to say if it's a host, change the the name. You dot caption uh, up here at the top. Change. Um, I believe it's the me. Where's the me? Oh, that's this part. Excuse me. The me it, uh, is up here. This blue area. This is one sock tutorial. It's going to add um, and hosting, saying that that person's hosting. Um, and it's going to take their name and add a host on it. And then it's going to take uh, the port that I set up is 10101. And then I'm going to close the socket in case it's opened by some other program. And then I'm going to make it listen. And then I'm going to enable a timer. Um, <coughs> all this timer does is it's down here. Is it checks to see if this socket is ever closed by another program or some reason. And it turns it open again. So basically the server is always listening. Um, you'll notice that this is a control array with um, starting index of zero. The reason I start at zero is because that's one we have to remember is not being used other than just listening. <coughs> You'll notice though we start at index of zero for client too because that's all they have. Um, there's not multiple connections from the client side, only from the host side. So if they're not hosting, go down here. Then change the caption at the top of the window to joining, um, get their name, and make it say you, and then the port, and then connect to this IP address. Um, so we're going to close the socket, and then we're going to connect, and we're going to enable a timer to join. And then um, the set index, what this does is in a list box, it sets the index. Let me show you real quick. Okay, so I host. And sees his host hosting up here, but it sets this right here to zero. This is zero. If there's another name here, it'd be one, another name two, and so forth. Um, so if you set it, the list index to zero in a list box, it's going to select it. I just left it like that. Um, it selects the first person. So that's the form load. Um, you notice that for the host, we only have a local port, and we listen. 
um, but for the connecting person you need the remote port and the IP address they're going to connect to and remember to close the socket and then listen if you're a host or close the socket and then connect now what is this timer doing down here timer enable timer to join go down to find it quick here it is check for no connection or error basically as the the person joining tries to connect if there is no connection it's going to have to find out in a few seconds it, what kind of state um, I said if it's an error close it and try to reconnect um, anything else if it's connected then do nothing um, also when it gets connected it's going to turn off the timer because we're already connected supposedly uh, there's no reason to keep checking so first off if you try to try to connect to a host um, it will hang because it doesn't know that the port isn't like someone's not there so every once in a while if it's if it gives an error which is socket error by checking it then you can close the, the um, connection and try to reconnect uh, until it finally gets its one its first time connecting to the host so this example would be um, I decided to join somebody's chat room but their chat room is not hosting yet um, so it will stay on waiting until they host okay so let's go up Here's the form of load. Um, basically, with the form of load, uh, like it says here, an important note during the unload, when SOC state is nine, this is the air state. Um, the way I found this out is I just talked, put message box uh, when SOC zero, uh, z the index zero dot state, and it came out with nine. So that's an air state. Um, you can find out what the number means by going on the internet, typing in when SOC air states. Um, for Visual Basic 6, but basically it's an error. And so the only way to to move past this, if you want to send that the person left um, when they close their window, is we have to pass the error. Um, so you'll notice I just put on error, resume next. Forget, forget whatever error we get, just go ahead and continue. So if not a host, send data to remove user from list. Um, so it says not host, then the WinSock for the client, is going to send this data. Now what this is, you'll notice it's got that straight line that I was talking about um, in three digits and a space and then the name. Now when, when we accept data, Winsock, the way Winsock does it is if you put a bunch of data together, like if I wrote another line here, send data underneath it, it doesn't send it separately. Um, what happens is it sends it all together as a clump at once. Uh, so what's going to happen is we're going to, on the data side, when we retrieve it, we have this huge clump of text, and we don't know which event happened um, at that moment in time. We need to split it up. So you'll have it in order. It's a, it's all in order from the beginning to the end of the text, but it needs to be split up because it's going to think, oh, hey, here's, here's your data when you message box it, but it's going to be a big chunk, and you're going to be like, what happened? Um, so you're going to need an array, and you're going to need to split it by um, what we're going to use is this delimiter. Um, and then this is the code that we write, whatever we want. I put 004 because that way I know it's the fourth um, data uh, that we receive the code. We'll see that in a second down below. So if they're not the host, um, or I mean, yeah, if they're not the host, just send this once. Um, if they are the host, then send exit data to everyone so except for the host um, this sub right here sends to all other connections so it's going to skip the host if you notice if I push space bar right here it says index to skip well we don't need to tell the host we're leaving um, and then sending this their name and host and then this exit code right here um, we're going to find those what those codes mean in just a little bit uh, we use the do events to make sure it's forced. If you don't have the do events, it won't work. Um, then we turn off the uh, timer that allows it to listen, the host. If the host timer is still listening, waiting for a connection, we turn it off because um, we're exiting. And then we have a loop here. Uh, loop all through all wind sockets and close them. And then empty the form. So that's all that happens when it closes. There's the two timers we talked about earlier. Okay. 
going down here's the connection request this is where the handshake begins um, this sub only goes off for the host so you notice it will say here only run this sub for the, the host will only get it so we don't need to check if the host got this sub um, because only the host can get it basically we're going to get an index integer we, use, we call a function to get it um, what that function does is it goes from one to however many we have and if there's one missing a connection that's that got uh, someone left earlier and it un, uh, unloaded that connection then we can use that one now so if I have one two three four and the person that's number two leaves two is open I don't need to create a connection five uh, control array so we're going to use two um, so basically that's all this is load that windsock control array and the number or whatever one it is um, accept this request <coughs> excuse me <coughs> that's when the request ID this is going to be by that person whenever that person gets connected it's now accepted this is the ha actual handshake so this is when I remember I said a new windsocket will be will be created and then that windsock will accept the um, request ID. So that means that they hung, sh they hang shaped, handshaked. Um, so now you have a connection from one computer to the other. Um, the host accepted it in this sub. Basically, everything that I'm showing up to this point and even da further down is what you're necessarily going to need in your program. Um, you may want to copy what I have already and modify. Um, I don't, I don't mind about that. Um, but the reason you're going to have to do this is because that's the only way you can write this stuff. You can make it write it differently. You can make this look like an i, it's in dim i is integer, and write i here, i equals this, or then i here, and then i here. But basically, it's the same concept. Um, no matter what, you can't get around it. Certain, some things are programmed differently, but when you come back to the main concepts of stuff, you're kind of forced to program it that way. Um, so here's that function. It's just basically looping through the windsocks, checking to see if one of them is nothing. Um, if it is equal to nothing, then go ahead and grab that index and exit the function. If it goes through and finds none, none of them are equal to nothing, that means that they all exist um, from the lowest to the highest, then we need a new index. So it's saying the highest plus one. That's how we get this index. Um, Again, if this is getting confusing, ask questions. Okay, and here's the connect. This sub only goes off for clients. So as soon as the client connects, he's going to send data, um, this code right here, and then the name. So we're wondering, what are these code numbers right here? Well, here's the part that is the most difficult to understand and the 